Hello, everyone. AMG Hobby Talk Podcast. We are back with the cast and crew of four. Blair, how are you today? Awesome. A little bit of early morning computer trouble, but I'm dear to go. Mm. Nothing nothing a little extra. Caffeine can't solve. That, that solves all problems. That's true. Steve, collector of the scallops, collector of the people, collector of things. How are you? <laughs> uh, five pounds heavier because I demolished the scallops on the weekend. <laughs> Excellent. So the scallops are not. Did you get any recipes, though? Did anyone offer any or did you just go for it? I, I was too excited, so I just winged it. Threw some bacon on them, butter, butter, everything that's not good for you. I threw it on there. It was delicious. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Oh, Sherry, how are you today? I am wonderful. Excellent, excellent, <laughs> excellent. So we've got a couple of things we're going to touch on today. Today's going to be a straightforward episode, uh, and then we'll come back with a couple of other things for subsequent episodes. We chatted a little bit with the team, so we've got a couple of things planned down the pipeline for you. Some of them we've kind of alluded to, and some of them will definitely, uh, things that are work in progress, and we'll definitely get into it. Now, a couple of quick uh, order notes that we want to talk about. First of all, uh, mm-hmm. coming this week, uh, end of the week, is going to be the trade night. So the trade night is coming up on Friday. Uh, mm-hmm. Give me a quick rundown. I think it's the usual time. Usual details, uh, any modifications or usual yep. setup? So last Friday in the month, January 26th, five to eight. Be there. Beautiful, beautiful, oh, beautiful. Swear. Oh, Blair, listen, I might, I might put you to work. I might I might get you to push the button. You know, Like I said, at some point, the dream, and, and I'm just putting it out there because not necessarily this trade night, but one of these days, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to press the right buttons. I'm going to get it. And maybe we'll have a little quick live because I, I what I would love is a little pan, you know, a quick, you know, Q&A, a quick live, not for a long time, but I would love to have that for the channel because I think that'd be fun. Give people yeah. a chance to at least experience it briefly. And I think it'd be a, kind of a fun experience for them to see it for themselves. So that's one. And then the other one here, and I'll share the image while we're talking about it, is that the monthly card show will be back coming up this weekend. So following the 27th, yes. Now, one important thing, kind of sharing with folks, is that one of the key pieces was trying to confirm location, trying to confirm that that's all okay. And that has been confirmed, so I want to be able to show it to you. So let me just take the logo down here for a second so you can see it a little better. There you go. So here it is, January 27th, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Sherry, can you tell me a little bit about this location here, just uh, since it's a new one? And I will note, I made a little error on the number for the street address it's actually 7101 um even if you put 7071 in it still kind of comes up so it's the old sears outlet on the back side so the halifax shopping annex uh there's lots of parking so no worries about that there that will be our new location for 2024 future dates will be determined and we'll post as they become available so Mm -hmm. the car show will be 9 a.m to 1 p.m saturday january 27th admission is two dollars Perfect. Thank you for that. Wanted to make sure that we got those in because obviously it is a, a monthly tradition that has been going on, but new location. So it's important to note that. Beautiful. Okay. So we've got that going on here. Uh, no new products to talk about as of yet. A couple of things potentially down the pipeline, but we want to give ourselves a chance to uh, confirm those things before we pass them along to you. Now, we did get some items that came in the shop. And then, like I said, we'll have a little uh, short conversation here at the end, but we'll go through a couple of them. Great variety this time around. We definitely had quite a number of different types of things, which is actually quite nice to have as a change of pace. So let me share that here with you. So we're going to start off with one of these downtowns here from uh, Optic. And this is a Chase Young. Uh, I do enjoy these conceptually. It's one of those things where it's a little bit interesting when they go off the beaten path a little bit on it. But there are some times where you kind of sit back. I actually think I understand what they're going for here with the Washington thing, including the elephant and the donkey. Uh, it's kind of a, I guess, an appropriate Washington reference if you kind of get that one. Uh, and then you got a little White House thing. It's always interesting. And I think the Lincoln Memorial as well. And uh, you've yeah. got a couple of other things going on in the background. It's always interesting what they decide to put in the background on these things. I actually didn't even notice the uh, donkey and elephant until you pointed it out. So, <laughs> yes, that is a very political uh Influence card, I would say. You didn't I like notice it even them. more. <laughs> How could you yeah. not notice them? <laughs> it's one of those things where you look at the card and you kind of have to. That's why I say with the downtowns, I'm always kind of like, all right, what'd you put in the background? What'd you guys do? You know, I, I guess smart for them to include both, but it's kind of interesting when uh, it, it's it's a carefully calculated move if you decide to go down that route. But anyway, they they did include both, so that, so that is on there. I like it. Okay. All right, so this one is Josh Jacobs uh, for the Raiders. So we got the Las Vegas Raiders version. Uh, Quite a bit going on. Now, Vegas is – now, this one's interesting because uh, 
there's a lot you can do with Vegas and there's a lot of iconic uh, casinos and landmarks and things that you can do in Vegas. I, I do like that. I think down at the bottom that is, I believe to represent the Bellagio fountains, which uh, mm -hmm. if you've ever visited Las Vegas is actually quite the attraction. I uh, got a chance to see it. You can see the little display of it. So it is very interesting. I do recognize some of those landmarks, the little uh, Eiffel tower thing that, uh, yeah. that got there. Paris. So yeah, exactly. So definitely uh, fond memories of, of attending Las Vegas. So, that's a solid one there for Josh Jacobs as well. So that's good. And let's look at a UFC card. So this was interesting. Uh, yeah. So this one was the training shirt, uh, UFC Immaculate from Holly Holm. Now, Holly Holm's, uh, I don't know if any of you follow UFC too much, but uh, Holly Holm's career was interesting is that she she's kind of perennial contender. She did become champion. But more than anything, her biggest claim to fame was uh, knocking out Ronda Rousey. And right. indirectly, it didn't end her career in UFC. She did come back to basically uh, lose to Amanda Nunes, uh, where Amanda Nunes is the one that effectively put it in retirement, but Holly Holm kind of got it started because up until that point, Ronda Rousey had been on a run as champion, and this was the first time that uh, it was kind of the knockout situation, but not unlike, uh, I think it was Buster Douglas who knocked out uh, Mike Tyson, right? That was, the, that was the infamous fight. But what's funny is there's a parallel here because Holly Holm knocked out Ronda Rousey, became champion, but then in her first defense, she immediately lost it. Yeah, uh, and then she kind of she's hung around and been a contender for years, but never really recaptured, you know, the the, the moment where she was able to win that championship. <laughs> but as a former champion, still uh, a, a big name in the sport because of that. Once you're a champion like that, you're still a big name in the sport, yeah. and it's a two of two, and it's a pretty interesting looking card with mm -hmm. the little logo on it on the training shirt. So definitely a nice little chain. Like I said, it's a nice variety of, uh, of items. There was a video that Brad showed me yesterday. It wasn't of her, but I don't remember who it was. Anyway, it's oh. just a little short. And she's like, oh, I really enjoyed it. Like, it was a great match. I really enjoyed it. Like, her face is out to here. Her oh. eyes dripping. I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. It was, uh, I think it was from the last, uh, this past Saturday's event. Yeah. Think, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah they, they had one, oh. they had one in Toronto. Yeah. They had yeah one. I, don't, I don't understand. She was a mess. They were very talented, but like, I, yeah. I, I, you can't. Yeah. Generally speaking, truth, truthfully, uh, what's funny is that generally speaking, MMA is actually less dangerous than boxing because yes, you can get, yes, you can get struck. Obviously you definitely yeah. can, but you can also lose by submission. So it's one of those things where somebody and the ma and the matches, for the most part, the fights are, you know, a non-title fight is three five-minute rounds as opposed to a boxing match where you can get punched for 12 rounds well, at three three minutes a round. That's why, that's why boxers, no, it's not saying you can't. But for the most part, a boxer, you can get knocked down, get hit, and then they give you a standing 10 count. Whereas in MMA, if the referee looks at you and goes, you're out, that's it. We're done. Yeah. Yeah. You get help right away. Like you know, you don't have to. You don't have to, to keep taking punishment after you've been knocked out. You're knocked out. That's it. Yeah, fight's yeah. over. Yeah, I don't know. So, so I, I've, I've definitely watched my fair share of UFC, but but you can definitely take punishment. There, yeah. There's some oh, folks yeah. who hang in there and take quite a bit. Yeah. All right, this so we got cool. a Giannis. Yeah, we got a Giannis Antetokounmpo. I think I got that one. I might Good have job, that boy. Way closer. Yeah, it's scary to pronounce it. <laughs> it. It's a tough one. There's a lot of syllables <laughs> going on. I mean, and, no. I can't. Yeah. And, and particularly also in the morning, very dangerous when the coffee isn't fully in. Very dangerous thing. Uh, that, that was a dangerous move there. Don't, don't try this. You pulled uh, it. But that's in the zone from Spectra. I like, I'm a big fan of Spectra. I enjoy those. They got a lot of parallels though. Uh, so I don't know the name of this parallel. Couldn't tell you, but I do know it's one of the parallels there. And Spectra is actually a pretty interesting product. And this looks to be on card, which is nice. Yeah. I think that's great. Yeah, it's num numbered out of 49, and I believe this one's called Blue Disco. disco I was gonna yeah. say it, it looks nice. like the disco, yeah. it, makes, it makes Blair want to dance. Amazing, sensational, <laughs> sensational. But uh, that's cool, I think that's a fantastic thing. And then we've got here from National Treasures, we got a triple rookie materials of Jason Tatum to number 25. Good looking pieces. Uh, the only yeah. tricky thing with uh, with our friends at Panini is a lot of times it's like uh you know, player worn, event worn, whatever it is. They they've they've gotten become the masters of the vague wording. <laughs> but it is a cool looking card. From the aesthetic, from the aesthetic perspective, it's a cool looking card because you've got yeah. multicolored pieces. So three multicolored pieces at least is a good looking set of patch pieces on there. Then we got our vintage here. We got a Bernie Jeffrey on. And this is a Quaker Oats back. 
uh, in a PSA five. Yeah. yeah. Tougher curves. Steve can attest to that. Yeah. yeah. And I do like uh, a lot of these mid fifties ones are, are pretty nice because if you get a nice crypts image, although, uh, you know, our friends at uh, Parkhurst, you know, you can't, you can't cut off the hockey stick, man. <laughs> right there. For the yeah. end of the car, like, you can show the whole blade. <laughs> Unless Only Danny Jeffrey on is really, really good at shooting, you know, with like a half yeah. stick blade. That's a variation. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Yeah. Particularly the these ones are tricky though because of the uh, dark border on the back on the bottom. It's uh it's prone to yeah. a lot of chipping and damage on there. So it getting it in, in decent shape. This one actually looks pretty decent. You can see a little bit on there, but that's yeah. what keeps it from being a higher grade, but still pretty clean looking on bottom. yeah so that's nice i always like these uh because of the full image you know you see the entire player and, and uh yeah it's just a clean card with the white and the red border sorry yeah no problem yeah, yeah. entire player but part of the sticker <laughs> <laughs> all right so then we've got here a wrapper so this was a baseball stars wrapper uh steve or blair anyone want to tell me a little well, bit about this one or what how this one came to be in the store or Sure. So yeah, just like the the other items that we have, uh, you know, variety. Um, our hockey inventory, we're in really good shape right now. Uh, so we kind of focused on picking up other items like the football cards, the uh, basketball, the UFC cards, and this just came in. Um, which I'm a vintage guy, so I love wrappers. Like get me excited. You just don't see them that often. Yeah. And this is actually from 1937 Opeachy. I believe it's called 37 Opeachy Batter Up. Um, you know, the probably the big card in this set would be a Joe DiMaggio card. Um, really, I don't know if I've seen more than two of these. So when yeah. it just walked in with a bunch of new stuff mixed in with this, I, uh, <laughs> my eyes about popped out of my head. So, um, and again, great conversation piece for, customers that come into the store because the majority of them you know i've never seen it as well the fact that it you know has survived this long is yeah. amazing and actually the condition it's in like i mean to look at it you wouldn't think it's a 36 unless you knew you know it, it kind of almost looks you know something that could have came from the 80s but yeah nice nice I think that's one I know it's baseball, but that might be one that um, that might be one worth chatting with uh, with Bobby Burrell about uh, mm -hmm. because I, I chat with him pretty regularly. But he's very familiar with a lot of the early days of Opeachy. He he did he's done a lot of research on it for the hockey side especially, but Opeachy is Opeachy nonetheless. Yeah. Yeah, the hockey tends to be more valuable as far as wrappers, but uh, mm -hmm. there's only so much Opeachy baseball. Um, yeah. this one might be stronger than most vintage baseball rappers, I would think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Very nice. Some good stuff. As I said, a very good batch of what came in the shop this week. A nice variety. You got a little bit of everything, including, like I said, we did get, at least get a hockey card in there. So, uh, the CRTC will not, uh, sanction us for, for not including <laughs> the hockeys. We needed to make sure we included that in there. Perfect. Okay, so we've covered a lot of our main pieces. As I said, this will be a little bit of a truncated episode, but I do have a little quick uh, topic just briefly to discuss. Uh, a little open-ended. Uh, I want to get everybody's thoughts and opinions. Uh, one of the things that uh, came off a lot of this hockey season and a lot of the products is the Connor Bedard chase, the infamous Connor Bedard chase and the various cards that people are chasing after. Obviously, Bedard right now is injured. He's got the fractured jaw, I believe. Uh, mm -hmm. I did get a chance to read the article. It looks like it's going to be the full length of recovery time, about four to six weeks or thereabouts, somewhere in that range. Uh, you know, good news, bad news kind of situation, obviously out of sight, out of mind a little bit, but at the same time, uh, I think series two isn't due to come out until I think early April thereabouts is kind of the current date that has been projected. Uh, downside is that he's kind of out of sight, out of mind. He's not really accumulating any more stats and hurting my over under points, which I'm very sad about. Like this is completely, this is very unfortunate is, is the point that I'm getting at. But on the other hand, it also allows the potentially a little bit of a cool down to the mania that's been going on with a lot of Bedard cards. So this might be an opportunity if somebody is chasing some of the cards. See, the dogs are great. Absolutely. I think it does potentially give a little bit of a window, though, when things are a little bit cooled down and he's not putting up some crazy nights to it, maybe be able to get a handful of cards of what's available uh, before, you know, prices start creeping back up. And then Series 2 comes out and there'll be craziness for that, I have no doubt. Just curious if there's any thoughts about uh, what the prospects are of maybe being able to at least pick up a couple of cards while he's a little bit out of sight, out of mind. So Blair, Steve, what do you think? 
Yeah. I don't think, it, I don't think ahead, it's going to slow down at all. I think, uh, you know, especially with that, uh, you know, the draft picks card in, in the uh, Series 1, I think they're selling for $10,000 as PSA 10s. So mm -hmm. that just uh, that just adds to the frenzy. So on a daily basis, we have people, you know, coming in looking for Bedard. So it might it might slow it fractionally, but um, yeah. it's it's still going to be a huge. And we get phone calls every day about you know how much a series two going to be and can I pre order and um, so it's all about Bedard still. Yeah. And there's not much coming in the store, you know. Uh, I think we found some Team Canada, just some base stuff um, that we put in the showcase. It still sells pretty, you know, for a base out of that, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But no, we don't, definitely not a lot coming in. We see the uh, the draft day coming in to be graded, but um, not a lot of Bedard stuff coming in to purchase, that's for sure. So I think people are hanging on to it. And we'd be kind of a little timid to purchase it as well because the prices yeah. are so high so we yeah. definitely uh wouldn't want to be stuck with something and then of course you know we would have to make an offer to uh, protect ourselves and understandably um if i was the owner of the card i probably wouldn't sell it either because uh when you see what they're selling for but uh it's all about uh you know all about the store and just protecting our vested interest mm -hmm. when we purchase things no, that's fair. The part of the reason I pose the question is uh, so, and I'll use an example because I was able to pull it up here. Uh, so, Hockey Cards Gong Show, if anybody follows them on Instagram, uh, keeps an eye on a lot of the record sales uh, for various items. So, right now, the one that has been there, and it looks like it's been verified and paid for via Terapeak, which is eBay's own internal. So, if the item has been paid, it's important whenever you look up, uh, you know, mm -hmm. comps and you're looking completed, look for Terapeak is good because it has to be paid. Otherwise, it doesn't appear on the Terapeak database because it's eBay themselves. But um, the Bedard uh, draft card, uh, the high best offer that appears to have been verified is 12K. So 12,000 US, uh, which is, uh, look, I'll, I'll be very clear. I don't see a scenario, even if he turns out to be fantastic. It's a really cool card. And it is, and it is certainly going to be short printed relative to the Young Guns, obviously. The Young Guns will be available in fair abundance. But I just don't know if the NHL draft card, even in a PSA 10, uh, I, I don't see the sustainability of a twelve thousand dollar, <laughs> you know, price on that one, long term. Um, there'll be enough other cards that I think people will be interested in. So let me let me pre actually present this a different way then. So so you don't think it's going to make more than maybe a marginal difference? Nothing too crazy. It hasn't slowed down demand very much. Um, do you think it's actually hurt a little bit because obviously products are coming out as they're coming out? Do you think it's hurt a little bit that maybe we don't have too much of a variety of options? Because even if you do want to collect Bedard, we still don't have that many products available or that many alternatives uh, for the cards. So, Steve, Blair, Jerry, anyone wants to take a stab at this one? Um, sure, I will. Actually, for us right now, because before Christmas, you know, we were inundated with you know weekly products and stuff like that, and so were mm -hmm. customers. So I think this little one-month stretch of recovering from uh, Christmas – restoring some pride in our bank accounts, um, you know, it would allow us when the, when the new upper deck comes out, uh, you know, a refreshing um, reward for, for buckling down the last six weeks to uh, pay off all expenses. Mm -hmm. So we actually don't mind the lull in the action and, and the customers probably don't either. Definitely. Yeah. And I think, uh, like series two. I mean, I think a lot of people are uh, kind of uh, holding, waiting for that product, even though there there could be another one with Bedard in it. We'd have to check the dates, but um, yeah, I, I, I back to like Steve said, holding off from. It was a pretty busy stretch and series one, and uh, you know people are still looking for series one too. So uh, yeah, I think uh, people might be holding on for for series two, saving that money. Mm -hmm. I think it's there. I think what's going to be interesting is uh, kind of what we talked about is that you're going to have the, the price differential between series one and series two. To your point, I think there's folks that are definitely holding back, uh, waiting for it. I expect it will still do brisk business, but it is going to be interesting, the dynamic for the first time in, in a long time that I can think of having such a big difference between one and two, even though like, you know, the retail suggested retail prices is technically the same. 
but obviously you're going to see we're, we're already seeing a difference in the secondary market even the pre-sales are out there there's a big difference you, you can tell uh so it's going to be interesting to see uh what if anything that does uh, to the marketplace and also kind of to what blair's talking about i usually feel like by this point we'll, we'll see we'll see what kind of products that come out i usually feel like though there would be like a retail like a parkhurst or something like that there'd be like one of those you know smaller ones to offer an affordable alternative so like for bedard there would be like another rookie but it'd be a rookie that's you know a quote-unquote lower end but still allows people who would like one to be able to get access to one i don't know if we're definitely going to get series two i think will be the next major one but then obviously we're still looking forward to like sp authentic or you know some of those mm -hmm. potential products those will be I, i'm sure that would be a huge chase you know a future watch autograph there that's one of the key pieces that's included as part of that the other thing too you know the series two will also be you know coming in tins and blasters so uh you know those that don't want to pay the big bucks on hobby um you know you just need the right pack and you can pull a bedard out of those and you know again not sure of the price point on them but uh definitely will be be less than a hobby box and we'll have a lot of them because you know we've built up our allotment and worked hard the last couple of years uh for this opportunity so um mm -hmm. There'll definitely be a price point for everyone. Yep, for sure. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right, great. So then uh, I love, I'll direct everybody, as I mentioned earlier today, to check out, especially since it's this week, Trade Night on Friday. So you can check that out. We talked about that a little earlier in the show. And then also on Saturday, you're going to be able to check out the card show. Be sure to check out the new location. As usual, you can also follow with the social media. So I'll quickly scan it across the bottom here, just at the tail end, just so you can see it once again. You got the Instagram. Instagram is a great place to follow because you get a lot of the details and things. You also got the website you can follow. And then other information is included in the description. In the same vein of what we talked about the in the past as well, I also want to keep encouraging everybody to keep subscribing. I am seeing a little uptick towards it. I want to move towards that 250. I'm enjoying it. I also appreciate the comments that people have been leaving. So I'll highlight one or two just as we're closing off here to end this show. Uh, and appreciate the support and the comments, of course. And any questions and everything, I do direct people to the social medias, though. If you need a quicker answer, that is probably the best way to go about it. But I do want to make sure we cover that. Okay. So I got two comments here that I'll highlight, and we'll uh, wind down on that. So first one was from Blaine Hamilton here. Interested to hear what you all think about the design for Top Series 1 this year. So that's a quick uh, quick question there for you. And Steve, I'm sure you can have the bacon wrap scallops before try it out with the maple glazed bacon. Game changer. So, Steve, you know, you actually ended up doing that, but Blaine threw that out uh, from last week's episode. Forgot the maple glazed bacon. Bacon maple. Mm. That's why you, Steve, that's why you got to read the comments. The commenters are trying to help you. They're trying to help. I'm on it. Yeah. So, I don't know if you guys, I'll show you the series one real quick and I'll, I'll get your quick initial thought from you, but I'll show it to you here in a second. So, I'll read the other comment. What a great, uh, so this is from Gotham Collections, a uh, great, great commenter here on the channel. What a great video. I've heard countless stories of AMG helping correctors out with their grails. Uh, my Batherson one of one RPA card came from AMG. Uh, the Moosehead letter collection is amazing. So that's kind of what he was referring to there. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a suggestion, however, is something that created quite the buzz locally a few years ago when comments were mega hot. Shops would do uh, Facebook auctions on the page. Books were posted with only a starting paid price and auctions that lasted a week, ended a week. It made a lot of us super excited every single week, got us in the store every week, and collectors uh, got to meet all the collectors in the area thanks to Facebook. Fair amount of work for the shop, however, I assume, uh, but it sure did make collectors excited locally. It would be extra special since AMG does cards and comics and everything else. So just throwing out a suggestion, so I appreciate the comment That's on that. Great. We're always welcoming comments and suggestions. It's go. actually something I've been thinking about. So that is on the radar. Very nice. Very nice. All right. So we'll wind down here on the example here. I'll show all of you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get your artistic interpretation thoughts. So this will be what we'll finish up on. All mm -hmm. right. So Tops Series 1, 2024, they decided to go with a little different design this time around. I'll change it up from kind of the normal standard uh, approach. So I just want a quick high-level thought from you. So Blair. Artistically, what do you think? What say you? Hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wow. Enthusi enthusiasm. I love it. Yeah. Sorry. It, uh, it looks shiny. <laughs> um, That's uh, the reaction we were looking for. All, all right. Clip it. We're putting it on the social media. Clip it. Yep. Oh, okay. Send it over to Fanatics. Blair's, you know, <laughs> gleeful endorsement. I, I kind of like the look. I'm not necessarily a big yeah. baseball guy. Um, mm -hmm. Where the top has the black border, that uh, obviously will translate to, 
you know, uh, a tough card to grade depending on the print quality, um, you know, because they will pick up little nicks and stuff like that. Yep. Is the the reds uh, written yep. at the top there? It almost looks like a neon sign or something. That's, like it's that's what, I was, that's what they were going for. I think that's what they were going for. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was trying to come like up with. It. it was the neon. Yeah, it looked like neon going around the curve, but. Yeah. Oh no, I think your reaction was perfect, Blair. I think, it was. Uh, sound, sound effects and like just trying to figure it all out. You know, I, I think it worked out exactly the way we needed it to. That was sure. really beautiful. Oh, uh, so Sherry, your, yeah. your thoughts aesthetically, just what you see there. What do you think? Um. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> fanatics right now, I, I, can, I can see Fanatics being like we are not. No, I, I don't know. I, I don't love it. Don't hate it. Yeah. There you it's go. It's just, Perfect. uh, look, looks like a modern card to me. Not my cup of tea per se, but those who like it, great. <laughs> Gleeful endorsement there from the from the AMG team. I appreciate it. Yeah. I actually I actually had the chance to chat with this a little bit on my venues a little. Uh, and and my take on it honestly is that I'm not in love with it. However, mm. I'm a fan of changing it up because I do think mm. Tops gets in a rut of doing the same kind of design over yeah. and over and over again. So for me, I actually just appreciate they decided to go in a different direction. Yeah. And one point that they made is that they one thing is from these. I, I'm just showing you one, but from some of the other ones that have been shown. Uh, they do change up the little neon for the for the team lo uh, for the team nickname depending on the team themselves. So you know, Mariners will look a little different. Mets will look mm -hmm. different. They're using different colors, so they're mixing it up a little bit. So that's good. And one point that was made uh, from some folks that I thought was true is I think this will look very interesting in Chrome, in the Chrome format with uh, with potentially that extra shine or refractor version of it. I think it could actually look really cool. I think it would uh, look it, much better as a Chrome. Yeah, so that's going to be so having that as the base means that we're going to get a Chrome version of it. So mm -hmm. I think that's potentially going to be very interesting. But again, I, I give kudos to Tops just for trying something different because they do get a little lazy about the designs and just reiterate another version with the white border, another version with the white mm -hmm. border, small tweak here, small tweak there. At least for a year, try something different. If people don't like it, they'll tell you. You know, <laughs> you'll get the feedback, and uh, or you, or I would just stay the course. Blair was all over it; like he was into it. It was it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. I don't see any endorsement money coming from our company. No, I don't think the I don't think the fanatics overlords are, are, are really appreciate your 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 candor in that situation. Yeah. Oh goodness! But I do agree. You change things up. I mean, it's it, you know, there's people that'll love it, and then there's us. Oh. I think those who won't like it as much as the people who are going to want to grade them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For Very sure. Short. Perfect. So we'll wind her down on that. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, the team. Thank you, the commenters. And thank you to everybody who was uh, joining in a lot of these episodes. Again, continue bringing the comments. We appreciate that. Comments or questions are welcome. Uh, the social medias, as I said, are all available to it. And we'll be back with uh, future episodes on our usual cadence. And we'll bring some additional episodes. We're working on some things related to that. So hopefully you'll all get a chance to check that out and enjoy. Uh, and don't forget to like the video. Liking the video is very important. Like and we do have an audio version available. Right. <laughs> Sorry. What was that? I said, like, follow, subscribe now, please. And thank you. <laughs> Even if you don't Perfect. like it. <laughs> oh, no, especially if you don't. Especially if you don't, you really need to follow key in on every single word we're saying. That's very important. I also did want to mention that we have an audio version as well. So if you do want to check it out in audio podcast form, the, these episodes will also be available weekly in that format of your podcast app of choice. So for myself and the team, we appreciate you and we will be back. Thank you. We'll catch you in the next episode.